Hello everybody. Um, this is our first attempt at a video for our 540 um, drawing class. And I wanted to give you just a, a very quick rundown on how you can use um, SilverPoint. Uh, and again, SilverPoint is just a, it's one of the many metal points that, that an artist has at their disposal. It's a, a small piece of silver that you can see back here in the tip. It's probably about half of an inch in total length. And what I've done is I've taken um, an X-Acto knife um, holder and you just unscrew this and you notice there are four, four grouping prongs that will open up and then you can slip the silver in there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of force because uh, it doesn't open up quite as much as you'd like sometimes, but, uh, but uh, it makes a pretty nice little, you tighten it back down, it makes a pretty nice little stylus. So um, some of the different supports that you can use. Uh, traditionally, artists would uh, use a gesso of some sort silver point uh, gesso particularly and they would um, give a few coats of this white sir, uh, this white gesso to a, a panel or a piece of paper uh, it tends to have to be a pretty thick piece of paper because you know liquid and um, wet gessos and things like that will make the the paper buckle if you're not careful um, but that's something you can use uh, I, I think that any matte matte primer or matte paint something that doesn't have any gloss at all will work pretty well uh, you just need the right kind of texture uh, in order to um, get the silver to actually deposit on the page and you'll notice that um, um, like for example this piece of paper right here is very slick and it, it uh, i guess it does have enough a little bit of a surface to make a mark but but not that much um, sometimes you can find matte boards this is actually acid free matte and it's very uh got a little bit of a tooth to it um, so it's a bit of a rough surface uh, and it's actually got enough tooth to uh, to cause that that deposit to happen so I don't know if you can see that very faint silver line right there I keep going over it again and again and again and it will eventually darken up uh, <clears throat> and I think this is actually kind of a nice alternative especially since you're all teachers uh, if you're um, teaching this to very young children or even high school students uh, instead of having to go through the mess and the, the extra preparation of painting panels with the white gesso or even like a clear gesso, um, you can just buy some some very um, rough acid-free mat uh, foam board and uh, use that. Uh, you can you can use a regular mat board as well. This is just a piece of this is just a piece of white mat board, and again the the tooth is is such. It's got enough uh, tooth that it will, again, it will make a mark if I actually draw on it. This has actually got a little bit better tooth than the, than the foam core board. You can see how the line is uh, quite a bit darker. And again, uh, this isn't primed with any kind of gesso. It's just the natural surface of this, of this um, mat board. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty nice, uh, easy to use alternative to uh, having to paint boards or, or paper. <clears throat> and I, I can't tell you exactly what this is, but your best bet is to you know, to get some scraps, you could probably go to a mat, you know, a framing store and get some of the, the leftover scraps that they have. And, and the scraps themselves might be big enough to use for, for small drawing. Um, or at, you know, at the very least, you can, you can use the scraps to figure out which mat, which mat services work the best for the silver point. So, um, or, you know, copper point or gold point, whichever uh, metal point you're, you're using. So <clears throat> I will show you what I've got here, though, in case you do decide to go the old fashioned route. And uh, this is Liquitex Gesso. Uh, surface prep. It's, it works really, really pretty well, actually. Um, it's white. Uh, I'm not going to open it up. I don't think I need to do that, but it's white. And what you would do is uh, you would take your, um, your support <laughs> and you'd get a nice, a nice clean brush and you would um, put a thin application on. Oops, let me go this way so you can see what I'm doing. A thin application uh, going one direction across the entire support. You would let that dry, you know, whatever it might be, an hour or two hours. Once once it's dried to the touch, you can pick it back up and um, and go the opposite direction. And the one warning I'll tell you that if it's thin, and this is something that you'll have to, you know, it's a trial by um, uh, error. You know, you, you'll you'll figure out what works best just by trying it. You might even need to flip the backside over and give it a, a coat or two just so that it's a more of an even tug on this, and uh, it might keep it flatter for you. So, uh, what else can I tell you? <laughs> I have, uh, I prefer, actually this is what I use most of the time, it's actually clear gesso. Uh, and I think the nice thing about this is that, you know, if you wanted to work on um, something that looked like it was an unprimed panel, so you wanted that raw wood effect, you could use clear gesso, which would give you the right tooth for um, silver point to stick, but, um, but it's invisible. 
for the most part. So, which is really, really kind of nice too. So <laughs> I do that on paper because I, I think it's really nice to be able to see through uh, to the paper. It doesn't look like it's a painted primed surface, but, but really it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, the brilliant white of gesso is, is pretty nice too. And if you were, uh, if you're really interested in this and if this is something that, that, that you think you, you know, after you do a couple, if you think this is something that you wanted to continue to do, uh, I really strongly advise you to explore, um, you know, the historical, um, primers and, uh, and even, uh, different kinds of silver that, you know, there's a softer silver and harder silver and the different thicknesses of the actual, um, the little, uh, point here. Uh, you can find a lot of information on silver point on the silver point website that we linked on our blog. So spend some time on there. And I know the gentleman who, uh, who runs that site is very friendly and, uh, a teacher at heart, and I bet he would even uh, respond and answer to some of your comments on his site uh, or, or even a personal email. So, but anyway, let me uh, let me move this on to the actual demonstration uh, portion of this of this uh, presentation here. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the I'm gonna drop the camera down a little bit. Move it a little bit closer so you can see the the marks more clearly. And one thing that you might be able to see just faintly is a circle that I've traced in silver. Uh, I just, I had a circle object laying around and decided that I, I should probably just do a little sphere for you quickly to give you an idea of um, what's possible with this. And let's see if I can't zoom in a little bit more too. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Um, and again, like I was showing you uh, before, you know, you can treat this as a as a technique that actually requires building. So, you know, I'm not going to get in there and just make a really dark mark, and especially on this mat board because I can I can feel I can feel that uh, that indentation. It's almost an incision, and I'm damaging the surface. And likewise, you might scratch the paint or you might, you know, the surface of a, of, a, of a board sometimes is soft enough that you can, you can affect it too. I prefer um, to build slowly. So what I, what I do is this, I'll, um, where's my tip there? There it is. I'll just slowly pass an area again and again and again. And I tend to make these very little circles, almost like they're actually like ovals like this. And I crisscross them. And I'm, it's not a conscious making it an oval, it's just sort of the natural, way of, of um, moving the pencil tip as fast as I can, really. And you'll see it starts to make a nice hazy tone. And uh, I'll do that for the sphere. So I can imagine that there's a light source coming from one side, something like this. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, sh and start to shade everything below. And by the way, this technique that I'm showing you where you're just gradually depositing uh, material on the page, like a, like a dry material like pencil or silver point, is uh, is referred to as dry point. Uh, it gives you uh, a nice control and even value. And I'll give you some tips as we get a little bit more developed with this too. But it's a uh, it's really great for um, photographic rendering and, and such if that if that sort of thing is what you're interested in. And you can see how it's slowly building up a value. Uh, silver point is not. It is not um, a really dark drawing um, medium. It's, it's, and I think one of the reasons that I like it so much is that it's very, um, very quiet. It's this little whisper of a line, all, you know, oftentimes, and and you can um, keep building and building and building, and it will get darker. And depending on the support you use and the primers that you're using, you know, you'll experiment, and find out that certain primers will allow the silver to deposit more, you know, more visibly than others. And you'll find, you know, if you like a darker drawing, that you can, you can tweak here or there with your preparation uh, in order to get that. But still, uh, I think you, you'll, you're not going to really find it as dark as like a 6B pencil. It's, it's much more in line with an HB, I think. Um, and you know, as it ages, though, it will darken a little bit and it'll, it'll, it'll tarnish, which I think is pretty nice. So, so I'm just going to build this one little area here. And again, this is the dry point technique. And what I'm looking for is this. I'll do a little thing over here. Sometimes you'll shade an area like, like I'm shading around the top here. 
And uh, imagine this is just a blown up version of something down here. And uh, oftentimes you'll notice that you've got inconsistencies. For example, it's not uncommon to see a, a blemish, like a blotch or even a gap. Here's the gap. Here's the kind of blemish. And what your job is, you know, the thing that you should be doing then when you're, when you're looking at an area like, like the bottom of that sphere, you're wanting to make it consistent. So you'll look for these blemishes. And for example, the, the hole, the gap, I'll just fill right in. And uh, be careful not to go back over the areas that are around it by accident. So I don't, I don't uh, shade past that hole. I just go right to the edge. And then if I do a good job with that, it should just disappear, which it did on this one, which is very nice. So with blemishes, it's the exact opposite. With graphite, which erases very easily, you, you have the option of taking like a needed eraser and dabbing it gently. You know, you make a little point and you sort of stipple with the eraser very gently until it lightens enough. Um, silver point's not quite so friendly. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it does, well, it's friendly, but it's, it's not quite as forgiving with, with the marks. Uh, it tends to hold the, uh, the silver down a little bit more permanently. And um, so what you'll have to do is just kind of shade around that blemish until everything around it is the same value. And again, you're being careful not to go back over the darker area. Uh, otherwise, it'll just continue to get darker and darker and darker, and you'll always have that relationship between something being darker than something else. So, so you're um, you're just shading around it until eventually it disappears. This mat is really a nice surface too. It's an acid-free mat board uh, that that you know it's a scrap from a from a frame that we made, my wife and I. I don't know the exact brand, um, probably Crescent or something like that. I'd imagine. Uh, but you might just go to the frame store in your local town and see if, they, if they've got extra scraps. I know that the, the people here in Bowling Green have, on numerous occasions, donated their middle pieces, for example, that were too small to frame anything. They've just donated all that, that mat board to the school for students to use uh, to practice on. So Anyway, let me get this a little closer and show you what's happening there. And I'll continue to work on the sphere here while you're watching. Uh, and this is just one, you know, dry punch is one application. There are other ways of making and building tones or marks. Um, some, some folks like to, uh, to hatch and cross hatch. And so you'll see them um, coming up with particular ways of developing values, doing something like this or a cross hatch, which is, and, uh, and I do think though, that if, if you go that route, you want to consider things like maybe the, the contour of, of the figure. So like maybe you want curved cross hatches and cross hatches, or uh, it might be other things that you want to consider, like the overall design of the way that the, the marks are, are, are building on the, on the sphere. But it's a really, really beautiful technique. I, I do love silver point. I think it's a, it's again it's got a very nice uh soft feel to it um it's it's almost an understated mark uh in a, in a i think in a kind of a sophisticated way and i like the idea that it changes over time you know that it, it will eventually maybe in a year or two or maybe 10 years or longer it will start to warm up and turn more uh, brown it'll go from like a cool silvery feel um, to something that's much more earthy and uh, like rust almost, or I should say tarnish. It's just like the tarnish on your silverware. Because that's all it is, is silver. Silver that's been deposited on the paper. And I gotta tell you, you can't beat not having to prime uh, panels or, or paper because you know when you do prime, you know, for example, I know the Liquitex white gesso that I just showed you guys earlier. You know, you put the first couple coats on and, you know, there's like an hour waiting between each of those coats. And then usually you're supposed to wait like a whole 24 hours before you do anything on the surface so that the, uh, the paint has time to cure before you're, you know, pushing anything around on it. You don't want it to, to scrape up or um, anything like that. Let's see how that's slowly building up. Let me see if I can get a different angle on the camera that will give you a little bit more of a, less of a glare.
I don't know if that's better or worse. There we go. I'll build up this bottom spot for you. With the dry point technique, you know, again, I, I kind of keep an eye out, and that's a pretty sharp little tip on here. Uh, I guess I should probably mention that too right now. When you get your silver, you cut it with the wire cutters. Stick it in your stylus, whether it's a, a wooden dowel rod or, or your X-Acto knife holder. But once you get that tip ready to go, you'll need to take a little piece of sandpaper and uh, just kind of soften it up, round it out a little bit so that it doesn't poke your skin like a needle would. Um, if you don't have any sandpaper handy, you can just walk outside to the to the sidewalk and, and just you know a couple of drags on the you know a couple of drags on the cement will probably help uh, soften that down a little bit so it's not sharp because you don't want a sharp point. You can have a finer point, but you don't want it so sharp that it uh, that it will pierce the paper or get snagged or uh, what you definitely don't want is for it to damage anything. So, and you don't want to poke yourself with it. Okay, so, moving along, this area needs some, you can see how slowly this builds up, it's, it's a very, um, requires a, a great deal of patience, it's, it's not a flashy medium in any way, it's a, it's just what it is, it's a, it's a very delicate, quiet drawing process that takes, uh, at least the dry point takes quite a bit of time. If you're being aggressive with lines and you, you want to hatch and cross hatch, that might give you a little bit different feel, but still I would imagine it's not going to be too bold. And um, I recommend when you do the dry point technique that what you what you consider is this. Build your values um, slowly uh, don't don't get in there and think you can just press harder to make a gray darker make the gray darker by repeatedly passing over the area with your with your mark um, in fact I, I try sometimes to see how light of line I can make and I'll just sit there and pass over and over and over until eventually I see I see something depositing I'm not pressing at all because as a matter of fact it's just the weight of the of the of the silver point tool you can see it's starting to slowly bring a little bit of a tone there. I, I would never press harder um, than that uh, and, unless I was absolutely certain. And again, you know, I think for a couple different reasons. One of them is that you don't want to, uh, you don't want to burnish the paper. You don't want to s smash it down and make it smooth by accident. Um, like, you know how sometimes graphite drawings do that. Uh, I guess an overambitious student you might have seen this before. They'll they'll just smash it all down on the paper, and then you end up with this very glossy black surface that doesn't quite um, doesn't quite sort of connect to the rest of the drawing. It seems like it's sort of out there on its own. Um, I think it's nice when the whole drawing is sort of uh, you know it has a similar application, a similar kind of a, of character with the way that the values are built, uh, where you don't have areas that are just like again mashed down and smooth. So. Um, with that in mind, build your value slowly and uh, try not to, to press too hard. Try not to dent the, the paper. Try not to, um, you know, try not to make a mark that's so dark that you you're you know, that you wouldn't be able to um, to deal with it. You know, like by surrounding it with similar values or anything like that. I will show you real fast too. <clears throat> you can erase a little bit with some point, not a whole lot, but uh, but a little bit. Um, that little mark we put, where did we go here? That little mark we put over here. I test my eraser out first on some scrap before I ever use it, because you know you guys know, you just never know when you're going to get like some gunk from the eraser on your drawing, and it's like it's like falling out of the frying pan into the fire. But you can um, you can erase a little bit with this. It's it's a uh, it's not really that forgiving. But different surfaces will, and actually this surface erases very well, this matte surface, it's not too bad. So, let me move it over this way, give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, it doesn't erase nearly as well when I um, 
when I draw with this on panel and when it's also gessoed. So the matte board seems much more forgiving than that. <sighs> okay, back to the uh, back to the sphere. It's upside down now, but that's okay because uh, it's a small drawing, so I can just rotate it to make it most comfortable for my my hand. I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in. That's too far. I'm out of focus. To come back out. Anyway. What I was going to try and show you is that there are these little bitty holes. It's kind of the pore of the paper and just the way that I've drug my silver tool across it, but sometimes I can get in there and just put a dot or two to cut, kind of fill it in. And, and not filling it in to, to be just to, just to fill it in, but if I feel like there's a, a kind of visual hole, like it's just a gap, like a, a blank bald spot. And just get in there and kind of anyway let's see here well, that's kind of like a nice start to an underdrawing for this from this step i probably would start to uh, establish you know maybe it's like a core shadow and it could be that you get to a point where once you've got this you know you've, you've done some decent work of depositing just a a medium value on the page. Well, you might be just the slightest bit more aggressive with the with your pressure. You give yourself just a little bit of pressure to give your to give your uh, mark a little bit uh, darker quality. But again, be careful, and you're not going to get as dark as pencil. So you want to be careful that you're not uh, fooling yourself and ending up uh, with something that that is mashed down and too smooth. I'll show you one more thing too that you can do. Again, it all depends on the support that you use and whether or not you're um, you're using paint gesso or if you're using like this particular um, matte board. But I'm I'm feeling pretty confident this matte board erased so easy. I bet that I could actually smudge a little bit with the silver too. So uh, let me grab a paper towel, maybe even a little blending stump. Here's a blending stump. I got a little bit of a little bit of material. Let me see if I can find a new one. Here's one that doesn't have much on it. A little stump. But I bet if I get in here, yep, it just softens it up a little bit, which is nice. Let me show you. See, it's just doing what a blender does. Uh, but again, this maybe isn't something you want to do. I think you can certainly over blend drawings. And uh, I think that sometimes the pores of the paper are actually, um, they, they're, they're part of the nicer textures and qualities that give a drawing character and you know, personality. So um, whenever I, I do blend, I, I try to go back in and build up a little bit more so that it doesn't feel like it's you know, totally flat. It might have a, a bit more depth on the surface of the paper. between the high points of the paper and the low points, meaning you know, when you're blending, you're smushing things into the pores. You're blending it into the pores and you're taking it off the high points. But I think sometimes it's nice to have things on the high points and then have a little bit of a difference in the pores, the low points. And you shouldn't have any problem getting lights because it's such a light drawing technique. Um, you can just let the weight of the pencil sort of make the mark and you just, again, repeatedly pass over this area until you start noticing it getting darker. By the way, thank you, Paul, for reminding me about the, the foam core board last class, I had forgotten that uh, you guys had discovered that you don't need primer on every every drawing surface. So 
that got me to thinking maybe I should try the uh, the mat board that I have here too and sure enough the mat board worked even better than the foam core board that you guys discovered the last time you're in my class Let's zoom out a little bit see the whole sphere see how it's building up And it's so nice, you know, you, you mark on these, and they're such fine lines. It's such a so soft, fine line that it's like they almost melt together. They, they fuse together in this dry point technique in such a way um, that you can't see a line at all anymore, and they just become a sort of continual, continuous um, tone. Or I shouldn't say tone, but value, anyway. Tone when you're using color, I guess. Let me get back in here and keep going over this area and see if I can't get a core shadow to be just a little bit darker than the one I had before. Um, something else that I can do too, because I don't know how true the image on this camera is going to be. It seems like it's a little bit blown out in my in my viewfinder. I can uh, I can try and scan this image or photograph it and upload it so that you can get a sense of the contrast. But um, I will give you a little bit of a warning though about scanning silver point drawings. It's pretty much like scanning in some some cases uh, aluminum foil. <laughs> you know it reflects because it is silver. Um, and you won't see it necessarily until you strike it with a light. And I might, might be able to get that to happen a little bit here, even if I can... Yep, there you go. Where did it go? See that nice shine that's taking place? You'll get that sometimes on a scanner bed. Um, Um, something else too, there is an advantage to working with paint though. I actually have a silver point drawing over here I'm going to pull out and show you. Uh, the, the brush marks that are caused by gessoing the paper or the board with your, with your big heavy brush can sometimes be really beautiful. Now I've got a start of a drawing here, it's not finished, and it's, uh, it's working in a, in a method that's a little bit blurry. I've been doing these um, out of focus drawings. But you can you can see how you start seeing some of this. There are these textures and things that are in, involved that are involved in here, and sometimes you'll see the brush mark even. And I I do think that that can be kind of kind of nice. Look at how dark that that is. Let me pan back and show you the whole thing. I'll put her straight up and down too, so you have better. Better idea what she looks like. So, but anyway, not finished and very much, uh, very much blurry. So, matter of fact, I'll tell you one of the reasons I actually kind of gave up on her a little bit was you might have saw that little shine right there. I had started uh, overworking the dark areas, and I, I don't like. That's exactly what I was talking about with graphite drawings. That I try and convince students not to do so much if they can avoid it. If it happens, you, you know, at least maybe it can be in a way that seems like it's really planned and consistent, like that it gra gradually happens, you know. Um, but you can see in mine like there are areas where it's not shiny, and other areas where it is shiny, and it's a, it's just a little, just a little, um, I don't know, haphazard. So. Let me hold this up a little bit closer too for you guys. So you can get a sense of like how that was being built up. Razor crumb. 
You can see there's not really much much line direction there at all. And um, that is a personal preference. Uh, lines can be wonderfully beautiful and rhythmic. They can be descriptive of the form. They can um, they can be super expressive in other ways. And uh, really, they're your choice if you want to use them. Uh, just kind of consider how you're going to use them, and be careful that you're not getting too, you know, like you're. Yeah, you know, be very careful that I wasn't uh, making weird textures that seemed like they were kind of staticky in ways that they just didn't harmonize with the rest of the piece, you know, things like that. So anyway, I don't, I don't think I need to finish this whole thing for you guys to get the idea. Um, I would just continue working this in here, and I'd probably leave things, uh, leave the white of the paper as my highlights and things like that. So, but what I recommend that you do for your uh, your project, and I'll write about this on the blog. I want you to find a simple object, a very small object, something maybe about the size of what I was saying here. It looks like that's about three inches or so, maybe something under five inches, maybe or a little bit bigger is okay too, I guess. But spend some time um, finding an object that you can set on a tabletop and you can do a little soft sketch with in silver point just to kind of practice and warm up with this technique and I, I recommend that if you do that you select your your subject your your still life subject wisely and knowing that silver point is such a, a soft delicate technique you might find things that, that are um, more suited conceptually for that uh, or you know visually at least for example like lace Lace uh, is a beautiful material to do silver point drawings of um, because it's, it just shares some of the characteristics of the medium. So um, something to think about while you're looking for objects. So that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you can't actually do the exact opposite and you can, you can make some contrasting statement with it, but it's something that you might just at least consider and play with. And like, I guess it could be very, very funny if you had a portrait of somebody screaming that was so soft and silver point that it almost kind of muted them. That's interesting, conceptually. Um, but that's your choice, and that's, you're the artist, so you get to kind of pick that. So, And it's a sort of practice thing, too, just to... Oops, sorry about that. Just to um, get used to what the silver point can do before you maybe do something just a little bit bigger and a little bit more involved compositionally and... Um, conceptually. But uh, the nice thing about this technique too is again it's so easy for students to use and I think it's you know I think that it's got uh, a lot of a lot of things that are interesting about it. It's so old. You know it goes it goes back a long long time ago. It's uh, I you know metal point's been been used since the Renaissance and before. Uh, I know that that a lot of artists would use silver point um, as their pre preliminary drawing for painting. You know, it would actually be underneath the painting. It would be on the, the panel or the canvas that they were working on. And um, it's been very effective as, a, as an underdrawing tool. But um, the history is, is interesting, and that's something that students, I think, would be really uh, interested in, in hearing about. And not only that, but just the idea that it's silver and it's an object and a material that they're so familiar with. You know, they've seen silver jewelry and silver earrings and things like that. But uh, to to just say, hey, you don't have to draw with a graphite pencil, you can draw with a, a little scrap of silver in it. And then they start wondering about why does it happen? Like, why is it deposited on the, the page? And it just seems like it's a doorway to a lot of other conversations. And uh, it's not graphite, so it doesn't doesn't smudge and is nearly as well, and it doesn't get as dark. So it's a good material and a good uh, medium to help students learn a little bit of skill and control and uh, discipline how to not overdo things, how to not take it too far. I think you might find that helpful for yourselves too. So anyway, there's a little bit of a sphere. Needs, a, needs some softer transition values in here, but uh, not finished. Um, maybe I'll try and finish it and scan it for you guys so you can see where it goes when it's done. But um, hopefully this is very helpful. And my next task is to see if I can successfully upload this to YouTube so that you can actually watch it. So um, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.